One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. Link is in the description. Guys, it's Harry Haas here. This is just kind of kind of be a weekly recap of some stuff that's kind of gone on in chat. Um, and just kind of like the last week as a whole. Um, I know it is Tuesday, but, um, you know, on Sunday I took some time off. And then on Monday I just really didn't feel like recording a video. I've just kind of been super tired recently. And just been trying to catch up on some sleep. Um, you know, I've talked about this in a lot of like other kind of previous videos of like the importance of taking some time off and just kind of really gauging how you're doing. You know, there's some weeks where I'm just really, really productive and, um, you know, just functioning really well and I'm, I'm getting enough sleep. I'm waking up every morning. I'm feeling great. And then there's others where, you know, it can and, you know, it, the it, like sometimes trading isn't necessarily correlated with always like. Um, if you're tired or not, you know, trading can be really, really exhausting. And, you know, sometimes on my best weeks, um, you know, I've been the most tired. And sometimes on maybe weeks where the market's not really paying me, or maybe it's a week where I'm not really doing as well or adapting as well. Sometimes those weeks are, you know, when I'm getting a lot of stuff done. So for me, that hasn't always been necessarily correlated. But I guess, I mean, this week, I mean, last week was kind of a bit slower, and then um, the weekend, there wasn't really much going on. So anyway, I'm back now, and um, yeah, let's get started. Um, so these are just some things that was kind of talked about in chat. Um, number one, sometimes as a long trader, um, the move kind of already happens early, and, and there might only be one trade on it. So for example, maybe... Um, you know, a stock goes from a dollar to two dollars. It pulls back to a dollar fifty, rips to three bucks, and then all of a sudden, you know, we get that tank handle and it backside, right? And I mentioned this a lot, where once it is backside, you cannot be fighting. You know, fighting the backside as a long is the exact same as fighting the front side as a short. So you must be disciplined, you must be patient, and if you feel any FOMO, for me, it's always been best to just kind of avoid that ticker. Um, and I always picture me selling a bit too soon, just like when Alex and Bao cover a bit too soon. We may not get the entire move, but we always get the meat. That's the main point, right? You know, you can be, you can be right on a ticker and not sell, and then end up not getting paid on it. And, and... I, to me, like, I just don't really want that. I'd rather just take the line to line kind of scalp and then keep moving on, right? Um, there's going to be days where you feel like you are in the matrix, other days where you feel like the exact opposite. You know, um, I, di I didn't feel on that day like I had a lot of read, like I had a lot of the best reads on stocks. And the thing is, is that like, if you don't have a re good read on it, or you know you're you feel like you're kind of guessing, or maybe kind of gambling, it's always best to just be patient and just wait just that extra minute or two or three, because sometimes it can just go in a completely different direction, and you're like, wow, I'm I'm so happy that I just waited that extra minute, right? Um, you know, and again, patience has always been king. I mean, I don't really remember this particular setup, but. You know, being the hero has never paid me well. Um, being the hero is something that might work one time out of 10. You might get that dollar move and you're like, wow, try it again the next day on the backside, probably not going to work out, right? Those line to line scalps are how you can be consistent every single day. So if you just focus on consistency, you know, the p &L is going to add up. Sometimes I get that little inkling of saying, wow, I'm in the money very, very quick. I'm going to hold this for a little bit longer and see where it goes. Maybe I'll sell half and let the rest ride. Maybe I'm going to scale out in pieces because I see four resistance lines and, and maybe that's how I'm going to do it. Or, or maybe I'm just going to take halves. You know, that's, that's really where the kind of art of trading comes in. But for the most part, if you just focus every single day on those line to line scalps, you will get paid. Um, and again, it's easy to make money in a buyer's market. 
But those same guys end up giving it all back, trying to be the hero and averaging down on a stock after the top is set. Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. In that buyer's market, and it's starting to come back now, you know, we're Tuesday. Now we're starting to see that the buyer's market is, it's looking like it's going to start coming back. Um, you know, I'm not really sure if, if, if it will or if it won't. You know, I'm just going to play every single day the exact same, just to scalp, and I'm just going to scalp line to line. But again, there were a lot of people in that buyer's market that averaged down, averaged down, averaged down, um, and then ended up getting saved, right? So again, you cannot average down and keep adding to a loser and hopefully get bailed out. There's going to be um, times where you do get bailed out, but that's just really, really, really bad habits. The market has always moved in cycles, and don't be aggressive when it's not your market. So if you're in a buyer's market, yeah, you can push a little bit harder if you're a long trader. If you're in a seller's market, yeah, you can probably be a little bit aggressive, right? You know it's a seller's market. That adds that maybe, maybe that, maybe, maybe instead of saying I'm going to size up on this week at this particular time, maybe you say I'm going to size up once it's a buyer's market, right? Maybe that's what you want to do. Um, maybe you say, listen. I'm not going to I'm not going to size up just to size up. I'm going to size up and say, "Okay, maybe it's going to be in a buyer's market, you know, if I'm still confident." That's what you should always do, right? Fighting short is no different than fighting long. Um, you know, you're just trying to get the top or the bottom. Um, and again, that that that's not not going to work, right? We're going to you know, and and you can I guess backside longs require backside sells just like front side shorts require front side covers. So, you know, if you're trying to long a 350 support line and the top is set from four, well, if the next resistance is 370, you gotta sell 370, you have no choice, right? That is a backside sell. Maybe the stock goes down a little bit and it keeps going higher and maybe maybe you're gonna re-enter. That's okay, but you really need to take those just line to line scalps and um, not try and be the hero, right? Um, um, I'm just going to kind of go over these. I was just looking at that for a second. Um, I'll give you guys a little secret. Since right now, I'm not really looking at anything. Um, you know, everyone has a little trigger. And when they do something they shouldn't, it can potentially put them on an emotional tilt for the rest of the day. For me, it's when, you know, I chase at the highs out of FOMO. Um, if I lose even really by a penny doing something like that, it can put me in a position where I start finding the backside all the way down out of FOMO. Some people it's a large loss, others it is missing a trade or it could just be waking up late. Um, the point is to jur journal hard so you can find what triggers make you emotional and eliminate that from your trading. Yeah. So for me, what I found is that if I see a stock, um, you know, go from five to 10 without dipping, and then I see a little dip you know, maybe to 950. And I'm like, Oh, I'm going to take this here. And you know, we go up to we go up back to back to 10. Maybe I take it at 950. We go up back to 10. And then we immediately slam back down and I get out for maybe break even or a small loss. That is something that will trigger me. Because I'm like, Oh, man, like, I'm, I'm down on that. Like, are you kidding me? Like this ticker should have paid me like, I just watched this go from five to 10. This is ridiculous. You know, I should be up right now. Like, that's so annoying. And then you're like, oh, but I can try maybe 875 and 875 doesn't work. And you're like, oh, but I can try. And I discussed this on the 6K loss video. Um, it's probably about a year ago now. Um, and and that what is what I found was a trigger for me. So what I do when I see a ticker go from, let's say, 5 to 10, or it makes a massive move on the front side, and it can be the inverse for shorting, right? You see a ticker go from from 10 to 5, and you're like, oh, I'm going to short that bounce, and it, it just keeps kind of bouncing and grinding in the wrong direction. Um, for me, what I have always done is I've just always said, okay, I'm going to avoid that ticker till I open, and I avoid it. I, I, I restrict myself from that ticker. I say, you're not allowed to trade that. You are not allowed to trade that ticker because you know that you will be emotional on that ticker, 
Whether you want to be or not, you are going to be emotional on that ticker. So do not trade that ticker. Don't do it. Um, and there's other things, right? Maybe maybe you go for uh, a buy and a support, and all of a sudden it rips down on you, and you have to and you have to get out of that for a larger loss than you had intended. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, but I I can make that back. I can make it back. I can make that back. No. What you should be doing is is saying to yourself, um, you know, probably time to avoid that ticker. You know, there's other people, if they take a loss on one ticker, they immediately jump to another ticker, take a loss on that ticker, and that snowballs and that spirals. So journal, find out what is causing these losses. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.